Hey guys, Zach King here with another Final Cut Pro tutorial. Okay, today I've gotten a lot of questions about exporting, how to export. Um, I guess in uh, Vegas people were wondering, they call it rendering in Vegas and other programs call it different, uh, different things. But in Final Cut Pro, it's exporting. And that's basically when I take my timeline, say, okay, I'm done, I put the music in, I'm done with all my effects, I want it um, to be posted to YouTube or something or burn it to a DVD. You're gonna need to export first, so that's what I'm gonna cover in this tutorial. Okay, so I have my my project here, my timeline. This is my finished timeline. I have a short title, some music, and uh, an interview with a lifeguard. Let me turn off the sound here. So now I want to export this. So a couple ways to do that. I'm just gonna focus on one way today. Come up to File and Export. QuickTime conversion. Now wait. I have this selected down here. That song is going to be what's exported because that is what is selected right now. So what you actually want to do is make sure you double click the correct timeline. If you have a couple different sequences or um, different uh, yeah, sequences, then you're going to make sure you select just one. Um, and you can batch export, which we'll cover in a later tutorial. But for now, I'm just going to take this one export. My project here is called Timeline. So that's selected. File, export, use QuickTime conversion. There's QuickTime Movie. You can use, uh, wait here. Uh, you can, so you have QuickTime Movie, Compressor, and then Conversion. I'm going to do the conversion right now because uh, QuickTime Movie doesn't work for YouTube. But you, if you want to go on YouTube, you're going to want to do QuickTime conversion. So I'm going to save it as Timeline, sure, on my external hard drive, format, QuickTime Movie. So we have some different formats. Right now I can go into AVI, I can do uh, Windows Media, I can do anything I want right now. Here's all my options. If I want it on my iPhone, I'll click that and uh, export and it'll be saved to my external hard drive right here as this name. I don't want it on my iPhone right now, I'm gonna just do it as QuickTime Movie. Now, here's a where you can change a couple options. If if you have HD footage and you don't want it to be exported as HD, this is where you'll change it or um, your sizes as well. So right now my compression is going to be H.264. My quality it says right here is high quality frame rate 24 frames um, encoding and all dimensions. So this is where I can change my settings. If I click settings pops up a box and it says would you, what was your compression? What do you want it, your compression to be? This is kind of, um, sometimes your camera will tell you what the best compression is for your camera or websites. If you type it in Google and say, you know, I filmed whatever in, you know, 16 by 9 with a Canon XL2, whatever, uh, it'll tell you the best export settings for a certain project. Um, so you need to check up on those for yourself. Uh, look on different websites. Um, so, or just play around. You're going to have to uh, do a lot of testing. You know, for me to find the right export setting, uh, it, it took a while. And to get different projects, it takes different settings. They're not always going to be the same. So, frame rate, I'm just going to keep it on the current frame rate. It's going to take what I filmed in and just export it as that. Uh, I usually keep this at 24, sometimes 30. And my compressor, yeah, sometimes I like to bump that up a little bit higher than high. And uh, you can actually see the quality here. This is a preview. So if I take it down to the least amount of quality, that's very blurry. And that's definitely not something that's going to be acceptable in a project to me. So I'll keep it a bit high. That's my minimum right there. Sometimes best. It depends on, again, what you're doing. Uh, and here's where you can uh, change your size. If you, you know, a lot of competitions I've done online, they say, hey, we well, need this to be 500 megabytes or less. Sometimes, like I did a Mountain Dew commercial a while ago, and the company said, "Hey, we want it under 100 megabytes," and you know that's kind of ridiculous. But uh, this is where you can restrict it and say, "Hey, I want it optimized for download, streaming." You know, if you if you're putting a video on the website, you're gonna want to do streaming. If people are gonna be downloading, then you know, click that. If you're gonna burn to a CD or DVD, 
click that option. So, and if I click a, a different, each compressor has its own settings that you can change. They're not all exactly the same, but for the H.264, this is usually what I keep it on. And uh, let's go back here. I'm going to cancel that. We have uh, filters. You can add crazy amount of filters. I don't usually do this. Um, add any filters right here to my projects from this point. I usually do it all in the timeline. But you know, if you want to do something or special effect filters, color tints over the entire project, you can do that here. Uh, we also have size. This is important. You have it automatically selected. I think the default is on this compressor native. That means it's going to take your footage and just uh, fit it to what it thinks um, that it's registered to, to export as. But sometimes you, you know, because a customer wants something bigger or something smaller for a website, this is where you can change it. Go to custom and type in your numbers. I'm going to go 720 by 480 and that's where I could change it to custom. And I could also say preserve aspect ratio using a letterbox, cropping, or fit with dimensions. Again, you're going to have to test this out and see. I can't really explain what this does, but basically cropping, I mean, it does what it says. It crops it down to preserve your aspect ratio. If you don't know what that means, uh, try it. It'll probably look horrible, um, but but hey, if, it, if you have to do it, you got to do what you got to do. De-interlace source video, you're going to have to just kind of, again, see for yourself what these things do. But this is the basics on how to change the size here. Um, you also have pre-made sizes, so yes, there it was right there. NTSC 480, I was shot in 60 by 9 so I could have clicked that instead of typing it in. And sound settings, I usually don't play around with these much unless uh, I need to, but basically 48 is good enough. It's really good quality normal. I usually turn that up to better, uh, sometimes best. Uh, and uh, this, yeah, I keep it on 16. Little Indians always checked for me. Uh, stereo left and right, yes. Unless you want one track heard, you can click mono, but I'm going to keep it on stereo. And uh, here's some other formats you can do if a client needs something and, hey, we want this in AAC, then, you know, do that there. But that's pretty. And then you can preview it down here. And because I have my volume off. Uh, but I'm not going to do that now. And then prepare for internet streaming. Here it basically says, would you want your, your video to have a fast start or um, to slowly work its way up? That kind of depends on your internet speed and your website, uh, your inter your website uh, bandwidth. So you're gonna again have to test those out for yourself, and each each person is gonna have to do different settings. But this is the basics of exporting. It's it's not too complicated. I'd like to get in later tutorials about um, QuickTime Movie because that's what you're gonna use for iDVD or not iDVD, but uh, DVD Studio Pro. Uh, it takes that conversion, and then the compressor is a whole whole other program but I'd like to get in those soon so that's the basics of exporting try it out test it out for yourself you kinda saw it takes a lot of trial and error that's really what it comes down to but after you find that perfect setting uh, it'll be really awesome